Hey, what's happening? Little bonus episode today. Felt like talking to you. Did you ever wake up just in a funk? I'm in the funk. I don't know how we get there. I got a feeling it's uh, it has to do with my coffee. I've been drinking a little coffee lately. Santa Claus brought me a uh, a real nice, what do you call him, Keurig? Actually, Santa Claus in the form of my daughter and future son-in-law. Beautiful machine. Ours had broken, I don't know, about a month ago, and I tried to fix it. Put a little video up on that. The only thing missing was the hammer. It's important to take a hammer to uh, sensitive electronic devices. <laughs> Needless to say, it didn't work out right. <laughs> didn't work out right. <laughs> and I didn't fix it. Ah, you know what? It just, uh, it, like anything nowadays, we can say, eh, it's the computer board. It's, it must be something in the computer board. That's something we say nowadays when we can't fix something. Yeah, hon, it's uh, something with the computer board. Anyway, uh, I don't know. Uh, it could be a little bit, because, you know, even though you're drinking decaffeinated, you still get eight, eight milligrams of caffeine in a, in a cup of uh, decaffeinated stuff, right? So, I don't know. It just uh, got me on edge a little bit. Don't know. Maybe it's the whole New Year type of thing. It's okay to get into a little bit of a New Year funk. You know, you're thinking about life. I know I have been really contemplating deeply on life. Uh, not that I always uh, never did before, but just it's a little different now. I don't know what it is. I think just going to a new level, when you get a certain level in your age, each each time you get to the 40s, that's another level, the 50s, that's another level, and so on and so forth. And with each level, you know, you, I think I, I take and, you know, I sit back a little bit and I think, contemplate, oh, that was cool. That was great. These are good times. I mean, life was great. I've had a very good life. You know, I feel blessed. And you could say, well, yeah, you got a lot of things. You had things going on. And it cost you, like, you know, from a physical standpoint. Listen, those are the things in life that forge you into being the person that who you are, correct? And that's how I look at it with me. You know, the 25, 30 year, old, year, year span that is still continuing. I feel blessed to be here. And you change, you know, thank God I'm, you know, you, you evolve, right? You, it, it's funny and I forget who said this, but it's a really cool quote and it's not going to be exact because I can't even remember who said it, but basically what they were saying is the person that you become in the end, right? Towards the end of your life is the person that you always are meant to be. It just took you a long time to get there. And if that's the case, you know, think about that. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm very happy with where I am and with the, the mindset that I could have. Someone recently said, I put a, on Facebook, uh, it was pretty funny, uh, I put a picture of Uncle Fester up uh, and I had said something about, uh, this is the face I make <laughs> when someone's trying to convince me of something and their voice starts getting louder and stuff and I'm, yeah, yeah. And I'm, <laughs> it's pretty funny. But she says, I don't know what you look like. I don't know you, but I'm imagining this is what you look like. And then she says, no, I'm only kidding. You know, it's just uh I'm sure you're just uh, an open-minded guy sitting at a keyboard that, you know, and that's his guy. And I said to her, yeah, well, sadly, that is my picture, <laughs> which it's not. But, you know, we, we don't know each other, right? We, all of us, you know, we, we listen to each other. Another thing I heard recently was um, the problem with listening is a lot of people don't listen to learn. They listen to re reply to somebody, right? Just that they would get their words, maybe a proper reply and something I have been trying to do recently is to pause, is to uh, learn how to be a little bit more quiet, which is so difficult for me because I love talking. And I just love talking to people and I get excited and I start, you can hear it on the podcast sometimes when I got those guys are recording with them. I start, my words start getting ahead of my thoughts. It's like I'm pumped up because I'm happy to be in that moment, to be hanging with those guys and talking about whatever it is. And then we're laughing and uh, that's just how I operate. But in life, uh, in moments like this, when you wake up with a little bit of a funk, um, it's normal, quite normal to have a funk like that, but I pause, right? And um, I just sit back a lot of times, most of the times, how I get out of the funk, I take my music rides where it's just me driving around and I'm listening to songs, you know, or a little, you know, sitting out on a bench somewhere or listening to the music or uh, like today, kicking back and actually playing th music through this soundboard here. Um, and just getting into the tunes and, and it, you know, if you, if you see a common thread there, it's music, right? So today being in this little funk, uh, 
I thought about something that Bink had sent me a couple nights ago, and it's funny because he's like, man, these guys are so far ahead of their time. Uh, just check this out. And it was an old album that I hadn't listened to in a very long time. I believe it came out in 2003. And on that album of Steely Dan is a song called God Whacker. And it is one of those songs that when you listen to it, and, and I'm sure you have those songs in your life where, or in your library, in your, in your rotation, um, when you hear them, man, you just, it just pumps you up. It just goes and Bing's like, yeah, I, I work out to this song. I had, you know, I had songs like that a long time ago when I was working out. Um, the, the one album that I would listen to all the time was Metallica's Black Album. That was just a, an entire album of energy for me. I'd get on my bike and I knew I had an hour because it's roughly an hour long. And I had an hour to leave uh, where I was living down in Ridley Township to go all the way down Route 291 into Philadelphia, then all the way up uh, what was called Island Road. If you're, if you're from around here, you know where I'm talking about. All the way up Island Road, make my way uh, all the way up to, uh, to uh, Clifton Heights, right, which is, is a hall. Right then, all the way down through Alden, through Morton, working my way, weaving my way all the way back to Ridley Township, and I had to do it in an hour without helmet. wasn't smart. Mountain bike, riding like a madman. But that album would take me away to a different place. Uh, it wasn't safe, <laughs> but that was my release. That was my workout, uh, and I miss those days. Right. So, but even to this day, you put the right music on. And suddenly it, it, it transports you, right? It's like reading a book. And so with that, you know, I, I just love music. So today I'm going to talk to you real quickly. Hopefully you'll give Steely Dan a shot. Maybe just squeaky glasses. Listen to this. These look like Benjamin Franklin readers. It was a three pack for like eight bucks at Walmart, right? I needed them. I, I just, they didn't have, uh, there was no choices. <laughs> this is what you got. And I have, if I, if I took the time to, to check this entire place, I probably got 20 pair of readers. <laughs> Who knows where they're at? They're just, they're around somewhere. But anyway, Steely Dan, talk about this band today. Uh, it, uh, Steely Dan, I'm going to read from Wikipedia, right? Because they got a very good and concise uh, article about them. So read this, we'll play some music, and then that'll be it. So uh, Steely Dan's American rock band founded in 1971 in New York by Walter Becker, and he plays the guitars, the bass, and sings backing vocals, uh, who also he had passed away in 2017. Um, and then Donald Fagan, who plays keyboards and lead, he's a lead vocalist. Uh, initially, the band had a stable lineup, and in 1974, Becker and Fagan retired from live performances and became a studio-only band, opting to record with a revolving cast of uh, session musicians. Rolling Stone magazine has called them the perfect musical anti-heroes for the 70s. They're incredible. Becker and Fagan played together in a variety of different bands from their time studying at Bard College in Annandale on Hudson in New York. They later moved to Los Angeles gathered a bunch of uh, band musicians and began recording albums. Their first album, Can't Buy a Thrill, was in 1972, established a template for the career. Uh, blending elements from rock, jazz, Latin music, R&B, and blues, and sophisticated studio production with a cryptic and ironic lyrics, the band enjoyed critical and commercial success through seven studio albums, peaking with their top-selling album, Asia, which is just incredible. Did I say album? My kids get me all the time. Dad, it's album. A-L-B-U-M. Well, I think it should be album. Let's call it album. <laughs> anyway, that was 1977. Black album uh, cover with the, like a little red and white thing. You got to check it out. But the, after the group disbanded in 81, Becker and Fagan worked sporadically on solo projects throughout the 80s and through a cult following, excuse me, remained devoted to the group's work. Since reuniting in 1993, Steely Dan has toured steadily and released two albums of new material, the first of which, Two Against Nature, earned a Grammy Award for the Album of the Year. Their final album of new studio material was in 2003, Everything Must Go. And on that album, uh, I will play God Whacker. It's just a really cool song. And there's another one on there, uh, Lunch with Gina. Very good song as well. Not sure if we'll get to that, but uh, through the band, throughout all that, the band has continued to release compilations, box sets, and live albums on a regular basis. So after Becker's death in 2017, Walter Fagan reluctantly continued the group with himself as the sole official member. They have sold more than 40 million albums worldwide and were inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in March 2001. VH1 ranked Steely Dan as number 82 on their list of 100 great, greatest musical artists of all time. Uh, Rolling Stone ranked them number 15 on its list of 20 greatest duos of all time. 
And uh, regardless of what VH1 says and Rolling Stone says, I would push them up at least into the top 10. I think they're that good. If you want to read more about them, go to Wikipedia and check it out. Uh, but what I'm getting to here is uh, I'm going to play Godwacker. I'm going to play uh, Bodhisattva. I'm going to play Kid Charlemagne, and then at the end, I'm going to play uh, Don't Take Me Alive. You know, I, I, I'll be honest with you. Um, I think i got to play something from Asia. I, I think I really do, because that album, um, I, I want you to hear, in fact, let me find it here. I think it's the song Asia. But listen to the drum solo in there. Just incredible and precise. Hopefully you can hear this on a really good set of headphones or whatever. But uh, So the songs we're going to end up playing is Godwacker. Just listen to the, the the beat, everything about that song. It just goes, gives you energy. Then we'll play Bodhisattva. We'll play Asia from the uh, album named Asia. Kid Charlemagne. I get a kick out of that song because uh, in that song, uh, there's a line where uh, I believe it was Donald Fagan was getting into a, uh, a taxi in New York City and he had a guitar with him or whatever he had with him. I don't know what. He had something with him that indicated that he was a... Um, a musician. So he gets in a taxi and the guy looks at him. He says, what are you in a band? He said, yeah, I'm in a band. He says, uh, well, what do you play? And he says, oh, you know, I play this instrument or that instrument. He says, you any good? <laughs> He's like, I, I guess we go. I guess we're good. He says, uh, what's the name of the band? This is the taxi driver in New York city. You can imagine, right? He's like, Steely Dan, Steely Dan. Then he looks at him. He says, is there gas in the car? Yes, there's gas in the car. What a stupid thing to say. Of course there's gas in the car. <laughs> and this is that song, Kid Charlemagne, that you're going to hear that line in there. Is there gas in the car? And that is something that uh, <laughs> my daughter and I, my youngest daughter, when we were driving the uh, ring road the perimeter of the country of Iceland, uh, I would say to her, is there gas in the car? <laughs> and she'd look at me like, what are you talking about? And then I realized I had to introduce this kid to Steely Dan, and so now it's a thing. You know, every once in a blue moon, we don't wear it out, but uh, she'll look at me. Hey, Dad, is there gas in the car? And I say, yes, there's gas in the car. Or I say, yes, there's gas in the car. <laughs> Listen to the song, you'll get it. You've listened to Finding Subjects Podcast. Thanks a lot. I'm already coming out of my funk. Uh, hopefully you enjoy this. We'll do more of this. Thank you very much. Have a great day, and enjoy the tunes. See you. Peace.